Currently, with only 30 judges remaining at the 36th District Court, public service is at the core of what they do, adjudicating case in cases with both civil and landlord tenant dockets that are bursting at the seams. The recommendations by the Judicial Resource Recommendations Committee, the JRR, and this legislation gravely will impact the services that they provide. We realized the original recommendations was to eliminate two seats, and we're appreciative of the work that was done in the Senate to minimize that loss to one. However, in this body, we understand more than any that a loss is still a loss. Far too often in this body, we make decisions that put politics and profit over people. The 36th District Court has a thousand new cases filed and an even more inundated civil docket chips away at the citizens' constitutional right of being judged by a jury of their peers and having judges that understand the conditions of their respective communities. Many of our judges interface with our, cons our constituents at community events. They take time out of their schedules to sit down at meetings and to hear their misfortune firsthand. They hear about our small businesses who are being forced out of business because some big business wants their building out. They take time to hear the senior that is losing her home or losing his home because they can't pay their taxes or mortgage. They understand the family that is trying to raise their children and now they're facing eviction. And so they're trying to find a way to give them another chance. Now I'm not suggesting that my good friends from Livonia or Canton can't adjudicate cases. But I do suggest that there is a benefit to having judges like my constituent, Judge David Perkins, or Judge Kenyatta Stanford Jones, or Judge Demetria Brew, or Judge Silenthia Miller, understand the conditions of our economic challenges in the city. They've heard numerous cases of citizens driving without auto insurance because they can't afford it because we couldn't get our act together in this body to pass a more affordable insurance package for Michigan drivers. Yes, Detroit pays the highest, and these judges hear those cases. We have to do better. We have to set forth an agenda that will not just draw lines in partisan sands, but to put people before politics. I'll be at the prayer meeting next Tuesday, gladly, because I'm a woman of faith. But my greatest prayer in this 2018 session is that we seek a higher calling to service of all Michigan citizens. The, the numbers that have come from the JRR are spurious at best. The data has been showing that there's a need for an increase at the 36th District Court, not a reduction. We have to look at what this would create in the city of Detroit. Longer lines, poor constituent services. Our citizens deserve more than that. We know the history of our Third Circuit Court and our 36th District Court, and I won't get into that to belabor the hour, but why is it that every time we look at making reductions and cuts and taking away the constitutional rights of our citizens that we look at Detroit first? Oh, I'm proud to be a Detroiter, but I was singing on my way up today and my new employee said, is that a real song? I said, I'm proud to be an American. Proud to be an American, an American that treats all people equally. An American that really values black, white, Latino, Asian. An America that looks to provide service to all communities. America and a Michigan that will strive for one Michigan, not a divided Michigan. Taking away one judge at this court, when we have other courts that are already considering consolidating because we have judges that will soon retire, might have been a better option. Not Detroit's 36th district. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, especially those with legal expertise, to not vote in favor of this bill. Vote no on this bill to reduce judges at the 36th district court.